Hello everyone and welcome to this video on algorithm analysis. So in this video, we are going to solve the following recurrence relation in terms of n by using the iteration technique. And I have that recurrence relation in the blue rectangle that states that t of n is equal to 2 times t of n divided by 2 plus 1. And then underneath it, I have the base case. And the base case states that when n is equal to 1, our t is equal to 1. So let's go ahead and get started writing this uh, or solving this recurrence relation. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create a column called K and it will contain the number of iterations. And then I'm going to have another column called T of N which will contain our equation T of N. Alright, so for the first iteration we're going to rewrite our equation T of N. So T of N is equal to 2 times T of N divided by 2 plus 1. Now to get to the next iteration, we need to figure out what is t of n divided by 2. So we can solve that here. t of n divided by 2 is equal to 2 times t of n divided by 2 divided by 2 plus 1. Okay, so now for our second k iteration, our equation t of n will look like this. We're going to substitute in for t of n divided by 2. We're going to substitute in the equation that we just solved. So we get 2 times 2 times t of n divided by 2 divided by 2 plus 1. And then we need to add that last one there. Okay. So let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. So we get 2 to the power of 2 times t of n divided by 2 divided by 2 is just n divided by 4 or n divided by 2 squared and then we have plus 2 and then plus 1 now the whole purpose of doing the iteration technique is to find a pattern and then come up with a general form so um, I'm going to kind of rewrite this a little bit to try to find a pattern. So one thing I see is that we have 2 to the power of 2. So I'm going to try to rewrite this equation in terms of 2 to the power of something. So this 2 here will now be 2 to the power of 1 because 2 is equivalent to 2 to the power of 1. And then let me erase this little line there. And then I'm going to rewrite 1 as 2 to the power of 0 because they are equivalent. Okay? And then once we find that general form from looking at these patterns, then we're going to make a guess um, to solve this equation. Alright. So, let's see. That looks good. Now we need to figure out, well, what is t of n divided by 2 to the power of 2? So, let's do that now. t of n divided by 2 squared is equal to 2 times t of n divided by 2 squared divided by 2 plus 1. So now we can go to our third iteration and we can rewrite our t of n. So t of n is equal to 2 squared times, and now we're going to make that substitution, so 2 times t of n divided by 2 squared divided by 2 plus 1 and then we have plus um, 2 to the power 1 plus 2 to the power 0 okay so if I rewrite this I get 2 to the power of 3 times t of n divided by 2 to the power of 3 because n divided by 2 squared divided by 2 is just n divided by 2 cubed, or n divided by 2 to the power of 3. And then we have plus 2 squared, and then plus 2 to the power of 1, plus 2 to the power of 0. And now I see that, that general form. So for some, for some arbitrary k value, so k can be 4 or 5, it could be the 5th iteration, I'm sorry, the 6th iteration, or the 7th iteration, or the 8th, so on and so forth. So for some arbitrary iteration, our equation t of n will look like this. It will be equal to 2 to the power of k 
times t of n divided by 2 to the power of k plus, well, now this right here might be a little complicated to kind of see, but when our iteration is 3, when k is equal to 3, we get these three values here. When k is equal to 2, we get these two values here. And then when k is equal to 1, we get this one value here. And so we just keep adding these values for the number of, of iterations. So already this tells me that this is a summation. So this is a summation. And it's a summation from i equals 0 to k minus 1. So how do I know that? Because the, the highest power for the third iteration is 2. That's 1 minus the, that's one minus the number of iterations that we're on. So we're on iteration number 3. And when we're on iteration number 2, the highest power is 1. And when we're on iteration number 1, technically the highest power is 0. Okay? So I know that this is going to be the summation from i equals 0 to k minus 1 of 2 to the power of i. Okay? All right. So I'm hoping that that wasn't too confusing. Now what we can do is we can rewrite this equation again. So we get 2 to the power of k times t of n divided by 2 to the power of k plus. Now we can use a summation formula for this, but you have to trust me on this, that the summation from i equals 0 to k minus 1 of 2 to the i is just 2 to the k minus 1. Okay, so again, you can look up that summation formula. I believe it's called the geometric summation formula, or if you look that up, I'm sure you'll find it. So just don't quote me on the exact name, but if you search for that, I'm pretty sure that you'll find the formula for this. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue. We're going to go to the next page, and I'm going to rewrite that general form. So general form. And the general form was t of n is equal to 2 to the k times t of n divided by 2 to the k. And then we had plus 2 to the k minus 1. All right. Now we want to get this in terms of n, and we can do that by figuring out when the recurrence relation will stop. So it stops when t of, I'm sorry, it stops when n is equal to 1, so that t of 1 is equal to 1, right? That's our base case. That's our stopping case, okay? So what we want is we want t of n divided by 2 to the k to be equal to 1, and in order for that to happen, we need n divided by 2 to the k to be equal to 1 as well. All right, and now if we solve this equation, we get n is equal to 2 to the k. So what that means is everywhere we see 2 to the power of k, we can substitute in the value or the variable n for 2 to the k. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to rewrite our general form, but this time in terms of n. So we get t of n is equal to n times t of n divided by n plus 2 to, I'm sorry, not 2 to the power, but plus n minus 1, right? So everywhere that we saw 2 to the power of k in our general form up top, I just substituted in the value n. All right, so now let's go ahead and rewrite this equation. So we get n times t of 1 plus n minus 1, and we said t of 1 is just equal to 1, right? That's our base case. So we get n times 1 plus n minus 1, and then we get n plus n minus 1. So we get 2 times n minus 1 is our guess for solving this iteration. I'm, so, I'm sorry, for solving this recurrence relation using iteration. All right. Now, what is this in terms of big O, like a tight big O? Well, this would just be, this would just be big O of n. Okay, so how do I know that? 
well. I have videos um, that you can check out as well to show how to prove this. Um, for now, you just have to kind of take my um, take my answer to be true. But definitely look it up yourself and, and understand how I got this um, big O notation for this equation. So, again, I think this is called the tight big O, but this can... This equation can be big O of n squared or big O of n cubed or big O of n to any power that's greater than or equal to 1. All of that would technically be true as well. All right. So anyways, I hope this video wasn't too confusing. I hope it was very helpful to you all. I tried my best to make it simple and quick. Um, if you guys have any questions... Please let me know in the comment section. If I don't get to them, maybe other people will. And as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.